What's going on everybody? I'm Dory Goodman, The Time Teller. If you are new to purchasing an automatic watch or maybe you're looking to explore the idea of buying an automatic watch or maybe you're just here looking for my opinion, hey, this episode's for you, so stay tuned. It's 2.30 p.m., let's get down to business. All right, guys, so I'm very excited for this episode. I'm gonna do a new uh, kind of series, Everything I Wish I Knew, and uh, because, let's face it, I get a lot of new watch collectors, and that's like my favorite thing about this channel. I have a bunch of new people exploring this hobby, getting their feet wet, and I realized um, there's a lot of things that I had to learn, not necessarily the hard way, but um, if I could only give these people kind of a cheat sheet on watch collecting, um, it might help them out a bunch. So I went into my notes, and forgive me guys, I have the dreaded pen, that's right, my Mont Blanc, uh, that I might be waving around, because I'm actually gonna do it old school. No laptops, okay, no newfangled tablets. Pen and ink, baby. Pen, pen and paper, that's what I meant to say. All right, so everything I wish I knew before buying an automatic watch. Number one, you don't have to spend a ton of money to get a good one, okay? There's this fallacy out there that, you know, you have to spend a bunch because it's automatic and there's these things moving on. It's not a battery, it's a bunch of little pieces and they're all working together in harmony. Wrong. I mean, there are a whole bunch of pieces in the watch moving together to tell the time. It's a beautiful thing, and I'm not a watchmaker, but um, special thanks to TikTok watch repairs, by the way, the only people the time teller uses. But the fact is, you don't have to spend a whole bunch of money. Okay, listen, I first got my very first automatic watch when I was eight years old, and it was a gift from my dad. It was an L.L. Bean Hamilton 9721 RAF Limited Edition. I didn't know what any of that meant when I was little. I don't even think my dad really knew what it meant. We got it at an L.L. Bean, and uh, he thought it was cool, so he gave it to me. He put it on a military bun strap, and I beat the crap out of it. But again, I didn't really know what an automatic watch was. My dad would have to, you know, uh, set the time for me every so often, put it on my wrist, and I'd go have fun. Um, but the first ever automatic watch I purchased myself was a Seiko SKX 007 with the 7S26 movement. At the time, I think I got it for under $200 brand new, um, and it, that movement gets a bad rap, okay, because it's inexpensive, it doesn't have a lot of bells and whistles, has a day-date complication, but no hacking or hand wind, and I'll explain that in a moment. Um, so people kind of give it a bad rap, but the fact is, I've never gotten that watch serviced. I've beaten the crap out of it. It keeps perfect time. It's practically running within cost standards. And uh, yeah, it cost me less than 200 bucks. So guys, don't worry about it. You don't have to spend a whole boatload of money to get a really nice automatic watch. Now real quick, let's talk about hacking and hand wind. Um, okay, hacking is essentially where you can pull the crown out and the second hand stops. You can use that to synchronize to another time source. Uh, in the military, they used it a lot. That's why the term hack watch came about. Out. And let's talk about hand wind, okay? Um, a hand wind complication, or I should say a hand wind capability, is when there's a movement that you can manually wind, and some automatic watches can do that, some can't. And the next point I have written down here kind of piggybacks off the first one. Just because something is super duper expensive doesn't mean it's necessarily good. Okay, so the price tags you can't always pay attention to because there are some pretty inexpensive watches like the Seiko SKX 007, excuse me, Seiko SKX 007. Um, that's very good and very impressive in my opinion. I've had no issues with it whatsoever. And then there are watches that are very, very expensive in the multiple thousands of dollars and they're not all that impressive and they're not really that well made. And I've actually made a bunch of episodes complaining about those watches. Point number three, they're not as fragile as you think. Okay, so I mentioned my L.L. Bean Hamilton. Um, when I was little, I didn't really know, like I didn't really know anything about watches, so I just beat it up. But um, when I first got my SKX, I was like, okay, this is automatic. There's mechanical bits in there. I don't wanna do anything that might disturb that, that thing going on. Um, but then I kind of realized, hold on, I, I should be wearing this watch, okay? I shouldn't be babying it. Uh, James Bond was beating the crap out of people wearing a Submariner. I should be able to live my life, a daily commute with my Seiko SKX. Shouldn't really be an issue. Um, and I know there's gonna be like, <laughs> James Bond was, was fake though. 
James Bond's not real. It's still real to me, damn it. <laughs> okay, let's, come on. But yeah, guys, honestly, aside from certain vintage watches, most automatic watches nowadays, you don't really have to baby them all that much. Which kind of brings me to my next point, this whole fear around servicing and the whole service interval controversy, uh, the whole confusion that comes along with whether or not or how frequently you should service your automatic watch, it's a borderline scam, and here's what I mean. There are watches, like my Seiko SKX, that I've worn very frequently, and I've had for a very long time, and they don't need service ever. I've never gotten it serviced. There are watches uh, from when I was very young, like that L.L. Bean Hamilton. I'm bringing it up a lot because it was my first ever automatic watch. Um, that thing definitely does need a service. It's, it's actually here on my shelf right now. Um, it, it's not keeping very good time. so. That's fine. There's also watches like my Rolex Day Date, my present, yellow gold, uh, and this is, I can't believe I'm admitting this on camera. That thing's never been opened up. That's right. That thing's actually never been serviced, and it is running perfectly. Okay, my Date 1500, uh, that's been serviced. Um, my other two-tone Date 1500, that's been serviced. My Submariner has been serviced. Um, my Explorer 2 has been serviced before I got it. Uh, but my Day Date, that thing's never been serviced and it's from the 80s and it's perfectly fine. Like, guys, and my watchmaker can attest, again, tiktokwatchrepairs.com, um, they're not paying me to say that. They're, they're just they're my watchmaker and they're my shop's watchmaker. They can attest this hyper frequency that watchmakers are saying, oh, you need to get the watch. Uh, you need to have it. Every time you wear it, you need to really send it in and have us inspect it. They just want to make money off of you. Um, so honestly, build rapport with a good watchmaker and they will kind of level with you and they'll tell you whether or not your watch really does need a service. I know I'm gonna get some heat for saying this, but honestly, guys, this, this attitude that you need to be constantly, frequently monitoring your watches and sending them in for service, that's just not the case. Which actually brings me to my next point, watch winders will not hurt your automatic watch, okay? Honestly, um, nine times out of 10, you put your watch on a watch winder, it'll be fine unless your watch is in very, very poor health. So all this stuff like, oh, I heard this watchmaker, he told me, oh, never put it on a watch winder because it's like running your car 24 seven. You'd never run your car 24 seven. No, it's really not the same. In fact, that analogy couldn't be more inaccurate. Having your car idling, as long as it is a, a good, healthy car, uh, again, that perhaps had some decent maintenance already done to it and it's in decent health and there's proper fluids going through it, having a car idling won't really hurt the car. In fact, most cars run better and perform better when they're turned on for periods of time. Cars don't like it when they're sitting not doing anything. That's when you encounter problems. Watches could be, I guess, similar if we want to stick with that dumb analogy. If you're wearing your watch 24 seven on your wrist, you're probably not going to overwind it again because most modern movements have a, a wind limiter, so you're not really going to hurt it. And uh, if you have a decent watch winder that has an alternating function, um, it's gonna make sure that your watch is being wound, but it's not going to overwind it, okay? Also, Moving back to that dumb car analogy. Um, we're talking about a car idling. We're not talking about running a car at red line, high RPM, under load for like extended periods of time. Of course, that will blow your motor. But again, moving back to watches, not trying to ba bounce back and forth, but moving back to watches, the watch isn't under immense stress while it's chilling on a winder. In fact, some watches actually need to be on winders at all time, like annual calendars, perpetual calendars. A lot of grand complication watches, um, it's not good to constantly be resetting them uh, and they want to be running at all times. There are watches that do not have quick set complications, like my first ever Rolex, my date 1500, that does not have a quick set date function and uh, it's not necessarily good for it to have it die and then keep setting the date and keep resetting the date. Uh, I keep that one on a winder and it's perfectly fine and that watch is from the 60s. So guys, if a watchmaker tells you, oh, watch find is a terrible, Blah, 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 blah. I could find the same amount of watchmakers that'll tell you they're perfectly fine. So um, again, 
I'm not a conspiracy theorist, but I think a lot of watchmakers are telling you that they're bad. Um, and then also they'll be like, oh, but send your watch to me so I can go and look at it and charge you a couple thousand dollars. Speaking of winding, okay, if your automatic watch has the capability to be hand wound, um, hand winding your automatic watch will not hurt it. Okay, I do it all the time. Sometimes I haven't worn uh, this watch for a little while. It has a GMT complication, has a date complication. It might still be running, um, but I just wanna give it a little bit more juice. Yeah, I'll bump it up, I'll, I'll, I'll pump it up, like those Reebok pumps, remember? Um, and I'll hand wind it a few times. That doesn't hurt the watch whatsoever, okay? In fact, even with my vintage watches, I haven't worn it in a while, it's automatic. I'm not gonna pick it up and just start shaking it, I might pick it up and, you know, wind it a little bit, get the second hand moving, throw it on the wrist. There, ease your way into it. And last but not least, <laughs> my list says so. Uh, ooh, I hope you didn't see that chicken scratch. I've, I've <laughs> One of the main things that my teachers would complain about and like send me home with notes was that uh, I had very bad penmanship. My dad's a doctor, dude, it runs in the family. He has terrible penmanship. But anyway, I digress. Last but not least, just because a watch is automatic does not mean that it's automatically better than a watch that isn't, okay? I think automatic watches are awesome. I think they're very convenient. I love watches that have a display case back so I can see that rotor moving around. Um, but to be perfectly honest, some of my favorite watches are hand wind only. Like, just hand wind, manual wind, mechanical. And I wear G-Shocks all day long, and those are quartz, I know, blasphemy, they don't have a soul. Um, and one of my all-time favorite daily watches is the Seiko Tuna SBBN 031 with a 7C46 quartz movement. So, um, yeah, guys, automatic movements rule. Don't overthink them, don't baby them, don't worry about this service interval scam. Just wear your watches, enjoy them, and uh, they're stronger than you think. But just because it is automatic doesn't mean it's innately better than one that isn't. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode. I really like this format of uh, kind of digging into my head and remembering what it was like to be a brand new wet behind the ears watch collector but that's all i have for you today so guys if you enjoyed this episode if you learned something if you had a good laugh or if you hate me because i'm ugly and this pen bothers you for some reason still please consider subscribing and supporting the channel hit the bell icon so you do not miss any of the content we do here at the time teller shop channel i almost said time teller shop but that reminds me check out the time teller shop www.thetimetellershop.com um, uh, that is the number one place to buy affordable vintage luxury watches and some of the watches there are automatic. And if you're looking for some really cool wristwatch related gear, check out the links in the description below. Those will take you to my Amazon store, a bunch of really awesome stuff that is good for any watch collector, not just watches. You know, we got watch toolkits, uh, watch winders. I know, oh no, watch winders, they're gonna break my watch. They're fine. But seriously, I wanna thank everyone here that's watching this content. I wanna thank my channel members, my certified T3 bots. You freaking rock. I love each and every one of you. Please like, comment, and subscribe. I'm Jory Goodman the time teller always remember i didn't invent time i just tell it <laughs>